FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is December 2nd, 2019. November ended with a whimper, as always. End of the holiday weekend. We're back to reality now. So, speaking about reality, there's virtual reality, there's real reality, and now we have to worry about AI. Is it a threat to your job? Is it a threat to your well-being? your economic security, your family's security, and and what about humanity? All good questions, and the person you're about to hear from is going to discuss it. But are you worried about it? Do you think about it? Or are you too busy with your day-to-day existence to really think about it? Let us know what you think. Please email us, kl at harrylutz.com. Well, Cyrus Parza is with us now. He's just written his second book, Artificial Intelligence, Dangers to Humanity. Covers roughly 50 big tech companies. And, well, Cyrus, so AI, I guess we should say, what is artificial intelligence before we get into discussing it? Well, artificial intelligence, the way I look at it, I wrote in the book, um, I, a just summary, bringing to life an intelligence or importing intelligence that thinks researchers, feels, creates, decides, and has this virus to operate as an individual, a symbiotic, or collective entity in a biodigital world through biofields, biomatter, and all frequencies um, within the micro and macro molecular dimensions. This is kind of heavy things. That itself can connect to robotics, IoT, computers, virtual reality, augmented reality, holograms, mixed reality, cyborgs, and even human cells uh, via the internet. Uh, so it, it's, it's very, very vast. Um, in terms of, of how scientists look at it, there's three, three levels, three basic levels. One is artificial narrow intelligence. And artificial narrow intelligence is basically what people are used to. And those are your smartphones, your virtual assistants, um, your, your Alexa, or your mini robots. Mm-hmm. Uh, or the robots that are coming in, uh, they'll be connected to 5G. The second level will be artificial general intelligence, which would be, like I just described, something like an AI or a robot that would be the same ability as a human being would be. And it would connect to the internet and be able to download everything and be as smart, if not smarter than all of humanity. The next level will be AI super intelligence, which is really deep and maybe it's not the best time to go into it. But artificial narrow intelligence is what we're used to at this moment. And the dangers that pose humanity is artificial general intelligence, which could be maybe one or two years away, according to Elon Musk, um, the founder of Neuralink, Tesla, SpaceX. Mm -hmm. All right. So you think it's that close, huh? So these things are actually going to be alive? So look at it this way. China started stealing all of our technology, um, acquired it through mergers and investments, and also through just researching here and being in the U.S. They have 1.5 billion people. We have roughly 300 million people. They have a, uh, they have a government that's a totalitarian government. This government has dispatched hundreds of thousands of AI researchers. So just think about that. You have hundreds of thousands of AI researchers who have taken the world's data, um, including all your family biometrics, which is over 6 billion people's biometric systems, from your Facebook, from your medical records, uh, from the internet, from Google, from from their own uh, platforms, and taken it back to China. What they're doing is using all that data and putting into IoT, smartphones, but also robotics. And when you have so many people working on robotics at the same time, and they're developing very quickly, and they're getting, um, they're getting intelligence from people like Elon Musk, who actually goes to China, 
cybernetic intelligence from Neuralink. They're also getting robotic uh, intelligence from uh, Boston Dynamics, um, which develops uh, robots in Boston. Um, they stole extracted um, materials from the WIS Institute in Boston that creates little robo bees that can actually fly for the purpose of pollination. They also extracted information from an institute called Draper. Draper um, works on little cybernetic um, insects. So basically they'll take an insect, a real dragonfly, they'll put um, a machine pack on the dragonfly, really, really mini machine pack, embedded into its spinal cord. When they do this, they can remotely um, control the flight of this of this insect. So China started doing this, and they started uh, doing it to beetles, dragonflies, all different kind of things. So just imagine you have hundreds of thousands of people who work 16, 18 hours a day who are after, um, you know, China has a history of being poor. So they want to make money. They want to be great and so on and so on. Um, once you have all these people come together, then you create robots that actually starts making other robots, which they're actually doing. Um, make they pay a face plus plus. It, it's a company, the facial recognition company with over 300,000 developers. They are in the US, they're in Europe, and they are in China. They initially were facial recognition. Then they developed into an AI company. Then they bought Arabot, which is an, a robotics company. So why would an, uh, a facial recognition company who has your data, the family's biometrics, who can do target analysis, you can see, uh, see tens of thousands of people and pick out one person, or hundreds of people at one time. Why would they go and get, um, become an AI company? And then why would they buy robots when they can put facial recognition on, in, embedded into the robots that can target people or, or even police people and connect to the 5G network? So when you, once you have all these robotic factories, not just from them, from Huawei and all these different companies, the robots will make other robots. And then when they get to the level of, of having AI automation, they can become so intelligent and so quickly develop machinery that, that will be like what you see in the Terminator movies. And Elon Musk, you know, he, he started sounding the alarm bells about two years ago. And he, he said, it's a lost cause. We have to merge with AI. So he wants humanity to merge with AI. What does that mean? Um, so Neuralink, it's a company out of California, and it's one of those companies. He, so people like to use the word chipping. What, what he wants to put is uh, little devices, implants into your brain that can have you connect to the internet. So instead of you having a smartphone on you, you don't need to do that. You would have something in your brain that you can connect to the internet, order what you want. So it's it's promoted as a positive way, but our discovery is we research over a thousand companies, 500 Chinese, over 600 Western companies. And this is the beginning of the end of humankind because you can be controlled as if people aren't controlled right now. You know, uh, when people are, are, are going online or going on YouTube, there is, there is a factor called social engineering. Um, I call it by digital social programming, which is when you're, when you're viewing things online, this cell phone that you hold in your hand actually connects to your biometric system. Yeah. It, 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 it puts an influence. It, it's, it's very deep. So I, I guess maybe I'm going a little too ahead. Um, maybe I'll stop here if you have uh, other questions. All right. Um, so I don't, I, know if, a I don't know if you ever saw this movie with James Coburn called The President's Analyst, uh, but it was really I, ahead of its time. And if you haven't seen it, you should. Because basically he's the president's shrink and he's kidnapped. Uh, by TPC, which stands for the phone company. And basically what they want to do is implant a uh, chip in his brain that will enable him to connect to the whole network to everybody's telephone. He just has to think a number or a person and he's connected to them and it's permanently embedded there. But the other thing is that Big Brother will be able to monitor your thoughts. And, you know, like uh, this was movie was popular it had a cult following and then uh, everyone's forgotten about it now but me so point is that uh, people have been thinking about this stuff for a long time but uh, but what uh, what is the uh, solution here 
FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Financial Survival Network is brought to you today by Orin Resources, a junior exploration company with the appetite of a major. It's hot on the trail of the next globally significant discovery, creating enormous potential upside for you, the shareholder. Orin is one of the most aggressive exploration companies pursuing high-grade, scalable gold and copper deposits and has a premier seven-project portfolio, including its two flagships, Committee Bay in the Arctic and Sombrero in Peru. Oren's unparalleled technical team and highly experienced management has a history of success in advancing and monetizing exploration assets. No wonder Oren's been called one of the best in the junior exploration sector. Oren trades on the TSX and the NYSE under AUG. To learn more, go to orenresources.com. That's A-U-R-Y-N resources.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Uh, well, so if you look at the Trump presidency, a lot of people hate the man. And mm-hmm. I, I look at him, at him, what his administration is doing is, is a lot of positive things. They're breaking up uh, big tech. They're breaking up uh, China's rise, which they threaten all of humanity. That was my first book, um, mm-hmm. AI, Trump, China, and the Weaponization of Robotics with 5G. You know, they have a lot of concentration camps, and they're using oh, yeah. this technology to surveil people, as you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Person they're engaging in organ harvesting of Christians, found out Tibetan Uyghurs, and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. So we, the problem is we have, so we went into China because people wanted to make money. So the, the investors and the business people, they, they, they look at a short term, five, 10 years. They don't care what happens to their families or a generation down the line. Now we're going into AI. It won't take 20 years. It can be a matter of a few years that the entire human race could be enslaved with a big, big brother network. So the solution is, first of all, I, I put in the book um, at the end, to not have, not have an AI ethics board or AI control body that is an AI scientist or is someone that um, that could be emotionally or financially um, conflicted in their interest. Uh, secondly, to stop all these um, automation, automated robotic um, industries completely. Thirdly, um, so Google, if you look at Google, Google um, Alphabet owns Google, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it, under Alphabet, there's Google LLC, there is um, DeepMind. So what you talked about is reading people's thoughts. They're working on quantum um, um, quantum computing. So all of humanity's thoughts at an artificial narrow level at the moment is being read anyway at the moment. It's going into the coding system. So when you attach a digital brain to the network, and that's what China wants to do on a 5G network, and that's what Google Design wants to do as well, you can not only manipulate and control of humanity, but you can enslave all people without them even knowing it, what I call biodigital social programming. So bio it has to do with your biometrics, your biology, your blood, your cells, your hormones. Um, your digital has to do with your neural networks or what the Chinese may think of um, energy channels and Qi and so on. There's different ways of looking at it. Uh, social is your social network um, or your emotions. Programming is just that, programming. So you are biodigitally social program via the internet, via IOTs, via smartphones, and then influenced and completely controlled by robotics and the 5G network. All of humanity will lose its free will. And what these scientists are looking to do, AI, we hope, we wish, we, they want AI to find all their answers. In Japan, they, they, um, there's Buddhist monasteries that have put automated AI and to teach you about Buddhism. And they're looking for generations down the line, it will be the head abbot. So that means they're going to make God an AI robot. That is their goal. Hmm. So the, the solution really is to make this an international and national security and, and, and stop it right away. Because once it, once the hat is out of the box, it's just like one after another, you have, issues that come up and you know people want this there's positives to AI right they want it for their health and they want to be free okay I want a robot to serve me and so on but the danger is it's like hundreds of nuclear bombs into one in a different way that way the positives by a thousand fold so I I am um, subscribed to keeping AI at artificial narrow intelligence and not doing any research that, that would go towards artificial general intelligence this is at least temporary so um does that kind of give you a, a yeah, general I framework? So. I think we got it there. I think we got it. So 
What are some signs that you can point to around us now? What about 5G? What's your thoughts on that? So a lot of alarmists talk about 5G having uh, health issues. I, I would conclude with that. Um, but again, 5G is not for people. It's for machines. Mm-hmm. It is. It, it enables machines to be automated. It enables drones to fly everywhere. Amazon or the BRI, which is the one bill, one road. China wants to dispatch drones throughout the entire Middle East, Africa, Europe, and uh, to mitigate um, postal service, but also social control. And they could have machines and robotics. So it's not meant for human beings. It's meant for robotics. And can you imagine um, a network that's 100 times faster? People can't process that. And we're having so many people with 4G saying, oh, my head hurts. I've had my phone to my ear. Um, Now I have brain cancer. And there's all these things. But these companies that are making billions or tens of millions of dollars off their products, um, they're run by people who are are dependent on on their work and their family and so on. So they don't care. They don't think about it. And if you look at it now, you know, you have... uh, half the country attacking the Trump administration, trying to get him impeached, but they don't understand how the world is in danger. The entire world is in danger, primarily via China. There's never been a president who's took on the Chinese regime, and he's took them on where it counts, at their money for two years. Now that um, the Chinese government has figured out, okay, you know, he's not just after our money. He's out to, you know, stop us from what we're doing and maybe eliminate the communist regime, which is the most brutal, murderous, rapist um, dictatorship that's ever existed on the planet. Over 100 million people have been killed. So it, it doesn't look good if, if President Trump gets impeached and he's... And he's uh, that's never going to happen. So I, I don't think that's going to happen, by the way. But, yeah. All right. Well, hey, what you told us is really interesting. So if we want to check out your website, connect with you on the web, get your book, where do we go? Well, you can go to the website, uh, theaiorganization.com, um, Twitter, at AI Organization. Uh, if, um, the website has the books, but if you want to go to Amazon, you can get Artificial Intelligence Dangers to Humanity on Amazon um, or, or, or Barnes & Nobles as well. All right. Hey, really interesting, uh, interesting pause for thought you've given us. And uh, we're definitely going to look into it and maybe have uh, have you back on again shortly. Uh, any questions or comments for Cyrus, just email me, kl at com, Twitter feed at Carrie Lutz, Facebook page, Financial Survival Network, and join our site, sign up for a newsletter financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Cyrus, thank you so much for being on and giving us the heads up on what could be a very serious, life-threatening, perhaps species-threatening proposition here. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me on your show, Kerry. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.